Many of us out there grew up with parents wishing we'd become lawyers, right? The dedication, the knowledge, and especially the paycheck that comes with being a lawyer is something that we aspire towards. But how do lawyers actually get paid? In this video, I'll break down the five main ways lawyers get paid, the benefits of these payment methods for both you, the client, and us lawyers, and talk to you specifically about how personal injury attorneys like us are compensated for the hard work we put in litigating your case after an accident. But first, there's something you just gotta do, and that is to click that subscribe button so you can see me, Attorney Kyle Newman. All right, so the way lawyers make money depends upon the type of practice that they specialize in, and usually boils down to these five types of payment methods, which are retainers, hourly fees, flat fees, consultation fees, and my personal favorite, contingency fees. But to really understand how lawyers receive money from these five payment options, we need to first look at what these types of fees mean and how they're actually executed to generate income for lawyers. Retainer fees are when lawyers get paid a set fee, which is going to be based upon an agreement with the lawyer and the client prior to starting work on the case. Think of a retainer as a down payment where the client prepays a certain amount of money for the lawyer to initially get started on the case. What happens with a retainer is after payment is made, the lawyer stores that money in their attorney account, which isn't necessarily taken yet towards their income. Instead, every time the client requests the lawyer's services or asks the lawyer to do something, the lawyer is going to deduct or take a portion of that initial payment to pay for their services as income and they'll typically generate a statement outlining the time and work involved. Retainers typically involve clients who have personal or professional commitments that make it necessary to have a lawyer on hand anytime they need it. Thus, instead of paying small amounts, Every time the lawyer picks up the phone for advice, the client gives the lawyer a larger sum which can be chipped away at over time whenever the need for legal counsel arises. Hourly fees apply to attorneys who charge an hourly rate for services, and it ranges from criminal defense to transactional to civil insurance defense, and it varies based on the attorney's experience, the type of service provided, and the market rate in that area for the type of representation representation needed. Usually lawyers who charge hourly fees operate on a month to month basis. So that retainer fee I discussed before is going to need to cover at least a month of hours the attorney expects to work on the case. And if their work exceeds that monthly retainer, the client may be asked to add more funds to the account. And similarly, if a case is very complex and is going to likely last months or even years, the lawyer may ask for a higher retainer to cover a longer period of time. Flat fees are a set price for legal work on an entire case or a service and is usually reserved for things that don't require extensive hours or major involvement by the lawyer. And these flat fee arrangements, they usually focus on things like drafting a will or filing for consensual divorce really anything with a set template that will only need minor tweaks by the client. Lawyers who specialize in things like family law or routine criminal charges like DUIs or speeding tickets are most likely to use flat fees as a type of payment for clients. And the price of these flat fees will vary based on the type of work involved and how good or experienced the attorney is. Consultation fees are the initial charges made when a client first makes an appointment with a lawyer. This is where the client will present their case and the lawyer discusses it with them in order to see if it's the right fit. And if it is, a larger retainer fee may be required in order to get started on the work for the case. Since this is the very first time a lawyer meets a client, Consultation fees are one of the easiest and potentially quickest ways to make money for lawyers and will vary depending on the skill and experience of the attorney. Lastly are contingency fees, which as the name implies are contingent or dependent on the success of the case itself. 
And these are the types of fees that plaintiffs, personal injury, and medical malpractice attorneys like us, we work off of. And they only come into effect if your case is won. What happens in a contingency fee is after first meeting with the client to decide whether or not we think your case is valid, after accepting the case, a personal injury attorney will require a contingency fee retainer or agreement be signed by the client where they agree that a certain percentage of the money recovered either at trial, by judgment, or by settlement be apportioned to the lawyer when the case is finished. Now, every state has laws that govern the amount which personal injury or workers' compensation attorneys can charge as a contingency fee. For instance, in New York, personal injury attorneys charge one-third or 33.3333% contingency fee of any recovery that's made in the case, which is pretty standard, but again, it's going to vary from state to state. Because the value of the cases we prosecute as personal injury attorneys have the potential to be six, seven, or even eight figures, the payout for contingency fees for attorneys can result in a larger sum for the lawyer, but this is really only because there is a big risk involved to the attorneys who work off contingency fees as opposed to a retainer that's given in the beginning of the case without any risk. Because if we lose your case, the personal injury attorney and not the client is going to be on the hook for all the costs that went into litigating the case, which at the end of the day can be tens of thousands of dollars, even more, depending on how complex the case is and how far it goes in litigation. At the end of the day, attorney's fees are going to vary substantially based upon the area of practice of the attorney. And if you're a client looking for a lawyer, just make sure to look up what the general amounts or percentages attorneys charge in your area for the type of case that you have. And if you don't like the price, don't be scared to shop around because there are plenty of attorneys out there. All right, that's my breakdown of how much attorneys get paid. But before getting out of here, do me a favor and click on that like button and leave me a comment with any questions you have about attorney's fees and I'll get right back to you. Again, this is attorney Kyle Newman and I'll talk to you soon.